Russian defense officials said in their statements that they continue to use long-range cruise missiles to support ground attacks. Russia is now trying to stop control of the Marines. The ship with an estimated value of $750 million sank with two Neptune missiles that killed about 250 sailors. A Russian admiral was said to have died during these explosions. Russia continues its struggle for occupation because there is a government that does not want to give up the war. In line with these demands of the government, the people are paying the high price of the war. The Russian army confiscates pickup trucks and jeeps belonging to civilians. Russia could not change its large fleet of military vehicles due to the long-lasting economic crisis and embargoes. He is aware that he cannot replace it with new vehicles due to the losses he suffered in the war. Pressed by other countries, Russia is experiencing serious problems in military production. It is stated that at the moment Russian production facilities are changing and modifying the seized vehicles. Thus they are working to eliminate the Russian vehicle shortage. They are trying to make up for their vehicle shortage with these vehicles belonging to the Russian people. It was stated that the seized vehicles were military attack vehicles and Jeep pickup model vehicles. It was stated that no money was paid to the owners of the vehicles whose vehicles were confiscated. It is stated that their car was taken from them without their consent and illegally. In this situation, the Russian peoples have problems with the seizure of vehicles by the state. Ukrainian soldiers continue to cause great damage to the Russian army at full speed. The Ukrainian army was in a weak position and a move came from Japan who saw this. In a statement, the Japanese Ministry of Defense announced that the Russian military plane was stopped. The Japanese Air Force announced that it has captured the Russian anti-submarine aircraft, Il-39, which is located near the borders of Japanese airspace. In the statements of the Japanese Ministry of Defense, the images of the intervention on the Russian plane were published on social media platforms. Russian authorities denied these allegations. But the Japanese Ministry of Defense is threatening to interfere with the Russian plane in their hands. It is not known exactly when the Russian war plane was intercepted by the Japanese Air Force. He says that, according to war strategists, Russia should give up this behavior towards Japan. Otherwise, Russian-Japanese relations may deteriorate to a great extent. At least one Chechen battalion is preparing for a second attack on Moscow. According to a spokesperson for the volunteer fighter group based in Ukraine, a spokesperson for Vladimir Putin's Kiev Sheik Mansur battalion said in a video message posted on social media last week that Russia may soon be fighting over its own country. Ukraine's fault line media platform continued, saying once again that a war strategy for Chechen independence was being developed. The Chechen Republic is currently divided into three fronts unwavering support in Ukraine. Sheik Monster Battalion said that they have successfully divided Chechnya into three regions and started working with civilians, emphasizing that it will reveal the movements of the enemy troops, revealing the number of weapons and the number of weapons. Kofol emphasized that even if there is no second fight for the throne in Chechnya, it is not impossible. He stated that Putin is putting pressure on the churches and volunteer unions that possible cooperation with Kiev on this issue is unknown and that he will convince Putin and the Russians that they need it. They said they would do their best to stop paying attention to Ukraine, which loves Ukrainians to end the war there. Russia is in trouble in the Ukraine-Russia war. Russia started to fall apart from other countries. Russia asked us not to make an ally of Japan, deploy U.S. military and missile systems in areas near Russia. Russia has recently started deploying missile defense systems close to Japan. Therefore, there is the possibility of a crisis between the two. Although the country see Russia's war with Ukraine, it seems that the events will grow more if the tension between Moscow and Tokyo does not decrease. Negotiations with Russia on the return of northern territories. As a result of these events, Russia increased the number of ships and planes entering Japan's air and sea areas. According to the latest statement made by the Japanese authorities, the relations between the two countries began to deteriorate. If Russia continues this attitude, 
we will do what is necessary. Russia will suffer the consequences. The shocking incident in the Russian army. According to the claim, the Russian chief of staff, Valery Gerasimov, was poisoned after the meal he let it. According to the rumors, it is said that Valery Gerasimov was poisoned by the food she let at the Russian headquarters. This information was shared from a Russian channel with many followers from Telegram. The general, who was immediately hospitalized, has been subjected to many assassination attempts over the years. It turned out that the Russian general was allergic to one of the ingredients in the food. The president, who had an allergic reaction after the meal he lit during the Ukrainian-Russian war, was immediately taken to the hospital. This event shocked Russia on the 172nd day of the Ukrainian-Russian war. We present to you the events of the war in the most accurate and fastest way, according to the statement made by the Ukrainian armed forces. Intense clashes continued between the two sides. A person named Trulovi, one of Ukraine's high-level executives, got into his car and was blown up together with the car. After the meticulous and successful operation of the Ukrainian intelligence, a big explosion occurred when the Russian administrator who got into his car got into his car. An administrator who gave great support to the Russian occupation of Ukraine was one of the names that determined the war strategies of the Russian army during this occupation. The murder of this general by the Ukrainian army was met with surprise and sadness by the top Russian generals. He was one of the most trusted men of General Putin who died during the explosion. The death of the general will cause great material and moral damage to the Russian army in the war in Ukraine. Many people were tortured and killed, and the Russian general, whose responsibility was quite extensive, was killed. The 141st Motorized Regiment of the Chechen National Guard was ambushed by Ukrainian troops at the airport near Kiev on Saturday during the Russian invasion of Ukraine and paid the final price. Both the Ukrainian Ministry of Defense and a captured member of Toshiba's battalion confirmed the general's death. In addition, the news agency reported that the Ukrainian National Guard and Alpha Special Units disappeared with the remaining members of the battalion with small arms. Chechen Republic leader Ramzan Kadyrov is in the top eight among his closest friends and is accused of crimes against humanity, including the murder of Tasha. It was also said that a few days after Kadyrov claimed that his special team was free of any health problems, it would be okay for Vladimir Putin to continue as chief for another 15 years. He protects the ships of the Ukrainian Navy with amphibious and gasoline-powered boats with their air systems. They equip their ships with both Soviet and NATO-type portable anti-aircraft missile systems, thus protecting themselves against all kinds of dangers. According to reports, these ships are currently docked off the coast of Ukraine. Those who were ready to detect and destroy these missiles against the danger of cruise missiles were said to have been installed on NATO medium-range Ukrainian warships before stating that air defense systems are actively used. Experts said that missile launch activities could not be reached because they were out of range due to their distance from the coast and therefore problems could arise. Many Russian military mothers spoke out against Vladimir Putin regarding the dead soldiers since the invasion of Ukraine began. No explanation has been made about the soldiers who died, and this creates huge problems. Moscow has announced the number of soldiers killed only once. The Kremlin issued a statement on March 25 announcing the death of 1351 Russian military personnel. No information has been shared since then. Valentina Melnikova, who leads the Russian Military Mothers Committee, said that no information was given about the positions of the soldiers, not even their own families, about the missing soldiers or the reasons behind the disappearance. The families have no knowledge of what really happened. In her last phone call with her son at the end of March, a Russian mother from one of her friends on duty said they were leaving and there was a war and she continued to say that they killed me. A place was arranged for their burial so that the family would not be paid. The mother wants her son's body returned to her. He complains that he was not given a proper burial after being informed of his son's death by the military unit. 
Another mother's complaints are as follows. 19-year-old Irina Khrushchevka is still missing. My son has been missing for four months. No one hears us and no one wants to listen to us. And I'm old because I can't see him. People think I'm much older than 44 years old. Regaining their independence by fulfilling their lifelong desire to be a soldier. And I need to know what happened to my child in Varkiv region by protecting his nation and why he was there, Lady Melnikova said in an interview with Medusa in May. We have no idea how many. The bodies of Russian soldiers are still not collected and buried, which is a huge. The heavy defeats of the Russian forces in the Volodar Barmut and Kremenosvodov regions. Ammunition losses caused the most elite Russian divisions to flee, surrender or refuse to fight. Almost all of the Russian Navy elite 155th Marine Brigade was destroyed in the battles of Kherson and Volodar. In addition, the entire first tank army of the Russian Federation was heavily defeated in the Battle of Kharkiv, and only 30% of all the army's divisions survive. Now we see that three more Russian divisions are faced with a similar situation in Luhansk. Let's take a closer look at how the Russian divisions were wiped out from the Donbass region as divine justice. We strive to bring you the most striking news, collective and accurate information from the front by working hard day and night with our expert staff as quickly as possible. You can support us by subscribing to our channel. In recent days, the Russians' problems in terms of military ammunition as a result of the resistance of the Ukrainian forces were also reflected in the momentary situation on the front lines. Turning the situation into an advantage, the Ukrainian armed forces increased their pressure, especially in the Luhansk region. The 92nd Ivan Serko separate mechanized brigade of the Ukrainian army destroyed the Russian army's ammunition depot in the direction of Svatov, one of the most critical front lines of the Luhansk region. The video of this striking attack was viewed by millions of users on social media. In the images of this offensive operation organized by the Ukrainian forces, the Russian arsenal, which was engulfed in flames as a result of the successful artillery fire of the Ukrainian forces, gradually burned to ashes. It was also claimed that after this incident, a Russian division in Stutthof fled the region. Those who could not escape were reported to have surrendered to the Ukrainian forces. A Russian commander who made striking statements on the subject attracted a lot of attention. The commander of a Russian Bars 13 claimed that Russian operations in the Luhansk and Warkiv provinces had been misjudged. In his view, determining the information conditions for the potential peak of the Russian offensive in this part of the front line was probably of limited scope. According to the Russian commander, Ukraine's significant expansion of its offensive area and continued active operations with reconnaissance and detection groups heralded the sad end. Such local offensive operations by Russian forces to regain lost positions and drive Ukrainian forces away from the Russian-occupied Svatov and Belgorod Oblast did not turn out as expected. For this reason, almost all of the 144th and 3rd Motor Rifle Divisions of the 20th Combined Arms Army in the Western Military District of the Russian Forces, as well as the 98th, 76th and 106th Russian Air Forces could not find a way out along the Svatov Kremina line. For this reason, these Russian forces in Luhansk were neutralized as a result of the Ukrainian attacks, and some of them were claimed to have surrendered to the Ukrainian army. The attachment of the equivalent of three Russian divisions to a separate geographical area showed that the Russian forces aimed to prioritize this axis of advance and to make significant gains in this area. However, these three Russian divisions which were faced with the crossfire power of the artillery attacks of the Ukrainians along the Svatov and Kremina were excluded from the war, having lost such a great military power. The Russian troops began to withdraw slowly from Luhansk, where clashes took place. Already, the decisive offensive operations of the Ukrainian forces, which continued in Luhansk Oblast, had for some time brought the tensions on the front lines in this region to a peak. Withdrawing from this critical terrain in Luhansk, 
the Russians realized that offensive operations could not be called a full-fledged attack. In addition, the successful offensives achieved by the Ukrainian forces in the positions near Kremena were one of the biggest proofs that the Ukrainian defense in the region had turned into an offensive. If you remember, the Ukrainian forces first created a steel defensive shield in Kremena. The Ukrainian soldiers who managed to repel the Russian attacks on this front line for a certain period of time, then went to the counterattack position and started to hunt the tired Russian soldiers in Kremena. When we look at the current situation in Kremena, we see that this time the Russians took the defensive position and the Ukrainians carried out offensives. Russia's war with Ukraine has undoubtedly inflicted an imaginable human cost with hundreds of thousands of casualties. But economically and geopolitically, the effects of Vladimir Putin's decision spread far and wide. Russia primarily occupied Ukraine's capital, Kiev, and the country's second largest city, Barkiv. Kiev defied all the expectations of experts and put up impressive resistance. Eventually, this forced the Russian troops to make a temporary retreat. Russia's next goal was to control the Crimean Peninsula, which was illegally taken by Russia in 2014. Team and to build a bridge between the Russian-backed separatist republics in Luhansk and Donetsk, which emerged after this event. These regions came to be known together as Donbass, and Vladimir Putin now wants to control it. But the freedom struggle of the Ukrainians does not allow this request to the Russian leader. So how did the Ukrainians suddenly seize the advantage in Luhansk? Actually, the answer to this question may surprise you, but we can say that the patriotism and courage of the soldiers in the Ukrainian army, as well as the military aid of the West and the USA, defeated Russia, which has one of the strongest armies in the world. Let's take a look at how this is. The 42-year-old Ukrainian soldier, Oleksandr Matsyevsky, who was shot by Russian soldiers and whose last word was victory over Ukraine was declared a hero by Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky. This example proved Ukraine's freedom victory in the clearest way and showed that sometimes courage and patriotism preceded heavy and powerful military ammunition. Zelensky awarded Matsyevsky to the country's highest medal the hero of Ukraine, a man all Ukrainians would know, a brave soldier who will be remembered forever. It is believed that Matsyevsky was killed in the city of Barmut, where he was serving as a sniper from the northern district of Chernihiv and where violent clashes took place. Makovsky's mother told the German media last week that Matsyevsky worked as an electrician in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, before the war. Here is a complete heroic story. This week, the Ukrainian forces bravely defending their own lands and continuing their war with the Russians with all their might managed to attract the attention of the EU. The EU took a critical step towards sanctions against those targeting Ukraine's territorial integrity. The European Union has extended sanctions against individuals and organizations targeting Ukraine's territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence for six months. In the statement made by the European Council, it was reported that the restrictive measures were extended until September 15, 2023. The sanctions include an asset freeze, a travel ban, and a ban on financial funding for those on the list. Current sanctions cover 1473 individuals and 205 entities. Most of these individuals and organizations were placed on the sanctions list after Russia launched an attack on Ukraine on February 24, 2022. With sanctions, the EU aims to weaken Russia's economy, cut off its access to critical technologies and markets, and reduce its ability to fight. Taking action after the EU, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz stated that he was skeptical of the proposed peace talks with Russia and announced that his country would continue its military support to Ukraine. At the joint press conference with Bhutan, Prime Minister Lotte Turin in Berlin, Olaf Scholz drew attention to the fact that Russia's war against Ukraine continues and emphasized that Russia has gathered new troops and sent them to the front. 
The Chancellor stated that under these conditions there could be no talk of negotiations. Schultz stated that they will continue to provide military support to Ukraine and that what they are doing now is aimed at changing the state of the war and making a just peace possible for Ukraine, stressing that Ukraine is ready for peace. But this cannot be dictated, Schultz said. You cannot negotiate when someone puts a gun to your head, but the Russian president still intends to do so. While the surprise support from the European Union and the German Chancellor to the Ukrainians continues to isolate Russia in the world political arena, it seems very difficult for the Russian army, which is losing power day by day to prepare for the screen attacks and to make an unexpected move. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications in order to be informed about new videos. Our contents are carefully prepared by our expert team. This content only belongs to Divine Justice YouTube channel. We will take legal action against stall channels, social media platforms and websites which use our content without permission. The dead are a lot of updates from the Donetsk region. He Russian forces switched from active infantry assaults to other ways of undermining Ukrainian forces' combat capability. They started using various guided missiles, tanks and artillery to fire at Ukrainian positions and destroy the hidden equipment. In the meantime, the Ukrainian elite 72nd Brigade concentrated their drone operators on the Russian base in Mikleski and successfully hunted down a lot of Russian tanks and armored vehicles. Last time I told you that Russians faced huge difficulties establishing a foothold near Volodar because Ukrainians have successfully adopted special artillery shells that scatter anti-armor mines. I also told you that Russian forces started summoning recently wounded soldiers for unspecified offensive actions during the last week of March. The freshest reports suggest that Russians are not ready to launch another offensive operation. The Russian side recently released a video showing how they tried to suppress Ukrainian firing points and observation posts in high-rise buildings by targeting them with anti-tank guided missiles. Unfortunately for Russians facing such a high number of windows in front of them where each can be used by Ukrainians at any time. Suppressing fire and moving closer to the town proved to be extremely difficult. Russians are also using artillery to shell the town. Russian sources reported that Russian forces primarily resorted to devastating 240mm Paul Pines, which is the largest modern system in use today. The footage from the Ukrainian side shows that even houses that were not hit directly have no windows and doors due to the shockwaves. Russians also found that they could not destroy Ukrainian vehicles inside the town because they are usually parked close to the northern side of the building. Given that shells do not fall vertically, the houses proved to be a great shelter, even though they may be in plain view from Russian drones. That is why Russians started to actively use different tactics. Recent footage reveals that the Russians are using incendiary munitions to burn everything on the ground. Unlike shells, they fall vertically, which allows for targeting cars and armored vehicles that are not in the shelter. Ukrainians are also attacking Russian positions, as most Russian attacks are currently being launched from Mikhailovsky. It became an area with significant forces, concentrations and plenty of targets. Ukrainian 72nd Mechanized Brigade recently released a video showing how they identified and destroyed fuel storage in the southern part of the village near the farm facilities and also targeted a big building with Russian manpower. Ukrainian 79th Air Assault Brigade showed a video of how they destroyed a Russian tank in the vicinity of Older. Finally, Ukrainian drone operators from the 72nd Mechanized Brigade showed how they hunted down armored vehicles on the Russian base in Mikleski. They managed to throw a grenade right in the open hatch of an armored vehicle and also chased down several moving armored vehicles that were driving in and near Mikleski. Some Russian sources reported that judging by the concentration of Ukrainian forces in the area, it is possible that Ukrainians will exploit the fact that Russian manpower is exhausted from constant attacks and will conduct a counterattack on Mikleski pushing the Russians to the other side of the river. 
Firstly, such actions would completely eliminate the possibility of a sudden resumption of offensive operations on Volodora, which will allow Ukrainians to reduce the number of troops in this direction and get more flexible with their reserves. Secondly, such actions would set better conditions for offensive operation in the direction of Volnovaka and Mariupol. Ukrainians had previously conducted a small cower offensive here in summer, which involved fording the river and they managed to establish a good bridgehead very rapidly. So the topography of the region should allow them to repeat the same success, especially as the quality of the country roads has noticeably improved, judging by the latest videos from Volodar. Overall, the continuous use of Atkins artillery and incendiary munitions by Russians and HIMARS and drones by Ukrainians suggest that both sides are trying to take advantage of the increased concentration of forces in the area and destroy as much enemy manpower and equipment as possible. If Ukrainians continue combining these efforts with localized counterattacks and push Russians from MIKULSKA, then they can set suitable conditions for counteroffensive operation and increase the number of options on the table by late spring or summer.